going down that bowl. I like it. So that would be negative for part B. Uh, and then Fx at A is not zero because the tangent would be this, so I'm definitely not going in that direction. So Fx at A, and some of you guys are a little bit, oh, it doesn't hit this guy, but who cares? As you move in, my heights decrease. That's it. If I were moving out, my heights would increase. So it must be negative this way. So as I if I am at point A and I put another point right next to it where the where the x is a little bit bigger, I am off the level curve. I'm actually moving in the direction of a, a definitely lower. But everywhere in between here is also lower. That's the inherent implication when they draw level curves like this. Uh, where am I? At? And then at, at B. So the opposite thing happens, right? I'm climbing out of the bowl. So I'm here, and as I move in the x direction, I'm definitely approaching a higher level curve. So I'm going up. And then at C, this is the one we talked about. I'm going in the same direction as the tangent to the curve, the level curve, which means I'm following the level curve. And if I'm following the level curve, I'm staying at the same height. So that would be zero at C. So fx really is, as I change my x, what is my output doing? It is actually very, it's the exact same derivative we did in Math 180. Just now, x and z, right? Fy, the same idea, exact same idea. Oh, let's see. Blah, 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 blah. What about this dude? And to be honest, I didn't say this to you guys, but this, these are problems I gave, these are actual problems I gave on a test a while back, on a 281 test. What? <laughs> I don't know if that, what that does for you to tell you that, but it's just the truth. Um, so the first, what's fx going to be for this guy? X. Yeah, it's kind of nice, the over 3's kill that. Plus 3y, I love it. Because 3y would be constant, x is the actual variable. Yes. What's fy? Minus, minus y squared. Yeah, minus y squared. Plus 3x. Plus 3x, I like it. And then what's fxx? 2x. Yeah, take the derivative of this with respect to x, 2x. What's fxy? 3. 3. You take the derivative of this with respect to y, that's what that means. 
And then what's, you got it, what's F, Y, X? Should be three. Yeah, it should be three, and thankfully it is three. Why should it be three? Why John say that? Because one is a function. Yeah, Clairaut's theorem, right? This is a, a nice, well-behaved function, so these mixed partials should be equal to each other, mixed second partials. And, but you don't have to, don't just put three there. Actually, make sure that you get three, and sure enough, you get three. Yeah. On <laughs> uh, an F, Y, Y. So you're taking, yeah, negative two, y. So this is the derivative with respect to y of f y. I like it. Now this one is a conceptual question in the beginning, but then you have to actually follow with the work. Conceptually, what direction do I go to find the fastest? The direction of the gradient, and then find the gradient at the point now. So. Um, we have already done all the work I need for the gradient in general, right? That would be x squared plus 3y, comma, 3x minus y squared. So what is the gradient at 2, negative 1? What is that? Over x squared? What? What's happening? This is fx, comma, fy. That's what the gradient is, right? Like it, and you got your fx and you got your fy. So, what is it creating at 2, negative 1? It'll be 4 minus 3, 1. And then this will be 6 five. minus 1, 5. So, what direction would I go in in order to climb the fastest? In the direction of that vector. Let me stop there for a second. Y. Was that a y? Yeah. So, again, uh, let me ask you, let me see if we get, Kevin, did you do the next one? Uh oh. <laughs> oh I was working on the uh, point. The directional derivative in the direction of some unit vector is defined to be the gradient at that point, whatever point we're talking about, dotted with the unit vector. Right? <coughs> when is the dot product the biggest? When the two vectors involved are parallel. parallel. So if I choose my direction to be parallel to the gradient vector, I'm going to make my derivative the largest it could be. So please let that be simple. The dot product being maximum, we've known that since we learned the dot product. And it should make complete sense that if, there are, if they are in the same direction, if they're orthogonal, the dot product is zero. zero. That relates to the level curve stuff I was talking about earlier. If they are parallel, then it's going to be the biggest it could be, right? So then what direction would I choose? Going back to part B, why does it make sense that gradient would be the direction I would choose? Because I want to go in the same direction as the gradient. U is the one I'm choosing. If I'm at some point, there is a gradient at that point. I can't change that. Or else I'm going to, unless I can just push the mountain down. I don't like this. No. I'm mean, at this point on the mountain, there's a gradient at that point, right? So this is what I can choose. I can choose what direction to go in. So what direction will I choose for part B? I would, of course I would choose the gradient, because that's what's going to make the derivative biggest. It's going to make the dot product biggest and hence the derivative. <laughs> wow. <laughs> biggest. That was a really big sneeze. <laughs> Holy shit, somehow that went along with that. All right. So what's wrong with this, in a sense, for what I have to do? It's not a unit vector. I want it to be purely directional. I don't want it to involve a length, because that's going to mess up my actual resultant derivative. So what's, how do I make this into a unit vector? I divide it by, which is? Two, two, two. Two, two. <laughs> right, three squared plus one squared. Yes. Okay. So you guys just got a little too hopeful. So then I got my gradient. I dot it with my unit vector that represents my direction I want to go in. And what do you end up with? Eight over root Yes, eight over root 10. That should be math that you desperately want me to ask you. 
Yes. That's the easy math. If you can't say that, you should come see me. Uh, and then finally we got this. If I'm you, I would double check and make sure that that's the actual output. Or you can just trust me. Um, how do I find the equation of the tangent plane at this point? Yeah, I've already got 1 and 5, right? So fx at that point is 1. Fy at that point is 5. And the tangent line equation is this business, just to put it down very quickly. So z minus what? Yeah, so z minus negative is z plus 3 equals? What is fx at that point? <coughs> X squared plus three. You guys are so on. Uh, <laughs> yes, one. Then we already do the work. What's the gradient composed of? Fx at the point, Fy at the point. What do I need for the tangent plane? Fx at the point. Oh shit! I already got it. It's one. So you guys have to. You understand that this is going to happen naturally. Plus, I also make sure it happens. What you've done here helps you here. You've already done the work here. Don't do it over again here. If you do, that's your choice. You're making the test longer than it should be. Right. So this is 1, x minus what? 2, two. Plus, plus 5, y minus, good. And then you can clean it up, you make it z equals x plus 5y minus 2 plus 5 minus 3 is 0. It's kind of so that plane happens to go through the, that plane happens to go through the, Origin, thank you. There's no, right? Because it's just like y equals 3x goes to the origin. That goes to the origin. There's no shifting. All right, that's plain. So uh, have a good spring break. I'll have the answer key for the practice test on Monday. Test is on Wednesday when you come back. Stop by tomorrow if you want to pick up your graded quiz. Oh, another one of these? Sure.